What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Um, yeah, this week was it's uh, it's the shortest episode uh, so far, obviously, but I think we were able to pack a good bit of Sarah's story into it. Um, yeah, it, it was definitely probably the most uh, the the best experience, the most life changing podcast I've done so far. Um, we allude to it in in the podcast, but. Um, about an hour after we sh- we finished this up, I took my first jujitsu class, and uh, it, it was it was incredible. Uh, it was honestly one of the uh, more challenging and and fun things that I've ever done in my life. Um, so uh, yeah, big thanks to Shreveport Martial Arts Academy, um, Wayne, Mark, uh, I believe the guy's name was Dalton. They all helped me out a whole lot. Um, the other two guys that I rolled with uh, were really, really good to me and, and really helped me out a lot, so I appreciate them as well. Um, second round of rolling, I did uh, kind of dislocate my shoulder, uh, so that's pretty sore right now. Um, yeah, it, it, like I said, we did three rounds, and it, this my shoulder popped out kind of in the middle of the second one, and I, uh, I didn't want to stop, so I didn't. And that, that may be paying for that now with as sore as I am, but <clears throat> I was just having so much fun. I really didn't want to quit, so I didn't. And, uh, yeah, I, I have bumps and bruises all over, and uh, I'm sore, and uh, I just just loved it, man. I, I, I love that feeling of uh, getting uncomfortable and just uh, really enjoyed the whole experience. So um, got some got some resistance bands, going to take some time off, and, and uh, start to do some rehab on the shoulder and, and get stronger and and get back into jujitsu gym. Honestly, that's that's kind of the goal now. But gonna keep rolling with the podcast. Got a couple more guests lined up, so we're gonna keep this thing rolling. And uh, really appreciate everybody's support. If you could hit that subscribe button, that really helps me out a lot. And uh, it, it uh, puts no burden on you, really. So uh, trying to get to a thousand. So yeah, if uh, if you want some stickers, hit me up on Instagram. Dan dot uh, we can I can ship you some for a small donation, and uh, yeah, Sarah's a badass. Um, I really look forward to watching her and her journey, and um, you know, hopefully we can we can interact with 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 Sarah or those the the Shreveport martial arts guys in the future. Uh, maybe interview some of those guys or create some content in some way for those guys. Uh, I think that'd be a whole lot of fun. So yeah. Enjoy the podcast. Let me know what you think. And um, thank you for all your support. Peace. So, Sarah Torgrosa. What's up? Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, uh, me and Sarah went to high school together and knew each other there. And I guess you ended up going to ULM. I went to Tech and kind of separated our ways. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to dive right into it. So, you were Miss ULM mm-hmm. at one point in your life. Um, was Were pageants, like, always a part of your life? No, I did not um, even think about pageants until I was probably 18, junior, or maybe 17, like a junior in high school. Um, if you you went to West Monroe, we did the homecoming assembly, and yeah, I yeah. sang, and someone was like, you know, you could really go to college on pageants if you want to work the system and that's what I did uh, I you know I was not a pageant girl growing up even when I did it my mom was like are you kidding me she she did was not a fan at first but then they eventually like got yeah. on board with that I guess whenever I saw you were Miss ULM it kind of caught me off guard because I mean you were a cheerleader but you weren't like every other cheerleader or typical cheerleader I guess mm-hmm. you know you weren't like the ditzy girl who's just trying to do it for attention like thank you uh you always very athletic and very driven and whatever you did uh, as far as the outside looking in perspective thank you um but yeah like I said it did kind of catch me off guard like 
you weren't necessarily the beauty queen type that I would picture. So no, I never was, um, which is was kind of cool. I kind of played that card, but yeah. I was always an athlete, which I think I also was like I stayed in pageants just because of the competition aspect. I wasn't really getting it. Um, I wasn't doing sports anymore. So then uh, um, uh, the only reason I'm doing jiu-jitsu is because of pageants when I was Miss ULM. So um, once I found jiu-jitsu, that kind of had no need to yeah to compete in that it, way anymore. It's funny that you mentioned like you were working the system like that. That like makes me happy in my heart because like, I, you know, I always see like opportunities for like, I mean, if you're a pretty girl with a like a head mm-hmm. on your shoulders, like you can, oh, you can kind of get away with anything to some degree. Out. I mean, the Miss America system actually is like the largest scholarship providing program yeah. for women. So, you know, supported or not, I don't even know. Yeah. It, you know, it was beneficial to me at that point in my life for sure. So I guess let's talk a little more about pageants and like prep for that. And I mean, I know that that's that's not a pushover deal by any means. You don't just show up and mm-hmm. and win. Um, I guess how, what was your journey up to winning Miss ULM? So I, that was my sixth title. I competed for Miss Louisiana six times. Um, each year I kind of took preparations a little bit differently. Sometimes, I, um, at the beginning I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just there to sing and have a good time. I was like a clapper. I had no chances of winning. I was just going to clap for the other Fair contestants. Enough. Yeah. And then kind of like two or three years in, I was like, okay, this actually might be something I want to do. I'm competitive. So it was just, um, natural to want to actually succeed. And I would, you know, start dieting a little bit out, um, a lot of interview prep. So this is helpful. Yeah. Um, because a lot of it you don't see on stage. The competition's probably won in the interview room. Um, so you can get the judges on your side, I guess. Yeah. And then um, I did a lot of training. I probably trained up the most for swimsuit competition, which doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> um, but just because that was like part of a physical part I, I liked that right that yeah. aspect of it and it was nice to like um to be you know rewarded or um told a good job like for, yeah for working hard that's yeah, what no i want to do and um really evening gown and all that was probably always my least favorite like <laughs> oh i'm just gonna smile at you know <laughs> <laughs> but so there's not a whole lot of prep for that but i mean some people do prep for it and they do a lot better than i did but. yeah so you won Miss ULM, or I guess you won a couple other titles before mm-hmm. that, and you'd always gone to Miss Louisiana mm-hmm. through that. Mm-hmm. So I guess what what was the turning point? Like, why did you why did you decide to stop? Um, well, Miss ULM was always my goal. I was competing for Miss Louisiana, and I wanted to be Miss Louisiana, so I worked hard for it. But really, like being Miss ULM, I meant that's that's what I wanted to do. I love that school. Um, they've and I got everything I wanted. I felt like, okay, I fulfilled my, my dream. And then I also met jujitsu on this road. Like, thank you, ULM. Let's go jujitsu. That's what happened. So, and that's what I did. So I guess you led right into how did, how did you get into jujitsu? So I was working for ESPN radio as an intern and it was right around the Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz fight. Okay. And, um, the first one, the first one, yeah. right. And the man I was working for asked me, or basically the, there was some connections. There's a school in West Monroe and, uh, I interviewed the coach there. His name's John Bunchy. And he asked me to come just try class and that'll get the face. Like that'll help me understand what jujitsu is. And I just fell in love with it right then and there. And, um, you know, I took some time off in between, but I've been at Shreveport Martial Arts Academy, which is where we are right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, for a year now, and that's, I mean, I love it. Yeah, and so, I mean, obviously, just like anything else, you, you started from the bottom and, mm-hmm. and knew nothing about it. I mean, you obviously knew what the sport was and, and that, but I guess what, what inspired you to go to go about it, <sighs> I've to always pursue it? Okay. Um, when you try it, you'll understand, like, you – don't know anything about jujitsu when you start obviously and like it's fun for me to um, I like to learn and I'm pretty obsessive about things so when um, you present me with something that I know absolutely nothing about but there's a way that I can figure it out it's not necessarily anything about strength or you know time well, it's a little bit of time you know yeah. um, you can learn it anybody can learn how to do it and there are people of all ages people of all sizes um, 
everybody can have different successes w with jujitsu. And so um, just the mental and physical stimulation combined, there's no other sport that I've ever tried that comes close to that kind of, um, oh man, the stimulation, I guess. Yeah, yeah, just the, the challenge and the success mm -hmm. of it, all that. And then if you throw competing in there as well, like, oh man, it takes it to a whole nother level. You're, there's definite parts in your game that are exposed that you have to then try to work on. And then by the time you work on that, something else is exposed on the next one. It's just, you just keep getting better. Yeah. And, uh, I've started competing just in January, and since then my game has transformed entirely. But for sure, oh man, so uh, much fun! I love <laughs> it. <laughs> so you mentioned like uh, Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. Had you like watched UFC before that, or not really? I I really don't even watch UFC now. I, yeah. I typically just stick with the jiu-jitsu scene. But yeah, for sure. Um, but I I do support the local fighters like Dustin Fourier just won this weekend. We watched that. Yeah. Um, but. I, I'm more of a jujitsu girl. Yeah, and that's I mean, I, I've dove into that as well. Just the, I mean, there's a plethora of YouTube that you can watch oh, and man. and just go go Google the Gracies and watch <laughs> watch the Gracies on YouTube. Oh, man. Like they'll just like blow my mind every time with just you know you never see a move and a, next thing you know wait people are screaming and tapping. So oh yeah, wait till you try tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean, uh, you mentioned like competition. Um, I guess how long did you were you training before you started doing that? So I started in 2016 and then trained kind of pretty on like pretty much for a full year and then for the next year I was kind of on and off and then I started here about a year ago and um, had been training full time and I, I train a lot um, seven to eleven times a week. But that, and that's not typical, but I just love it so much. They yeah, just have to sure. kick me out. Um, so around January, well, I was kind of like bugging. I mean, I like, guess if you get obsessed with it that much and you I'm built a, you, you built a family up around here, I mean, people yeah. start to push you and oh, oh, just oh, one absolutely. thing leads to another. Oh, yeah. Well, and when coaches see potential and um, it's, it is a, it is exactly like a family around here. Like and then we're all competitive with each other. Like you, we know that you're better than that. So. Um, the kids' class is super competitive, but um, a lot, what, what was the question again? I lost my train. Um, I guess what what led you to, to start competing? Oh, uh, I was actually bugging my coach like, when is when can I compete? Like I'm ready to. Okay. And he picked out the first one for me, and uh, had I had a lot of su success there. I got double gold, and then I went to a, the bigger tournament, which is an IBJJF, and then I lost my first one. Wait, slow down. What what did you just spout off there? Oh, IBJJF is the um, International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation. It's okay. the biggest tournament in the jiu-jitsu scene. Gotcha. Or tournament, um, probably. Uh, but w and that's where that's where you want to compete. I'm gonna actually gonna be going to the IBJJF Worlds in May as a blue belt. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my blue belt on April 1st, so it's still super exciting. Yeah, I saw you getting uh, getting whipped. Uh-huh. <laughs> like we run the gauntlet. Yeah, for know. sure. Um, one time three for the blue, two times for purple, three for four, uh, for brown. So I've got some licks coming my way. Yeah, too. for sure. So where is Worlds? It's in California in Long Beach. That's I'm exciting. Excited. Yeah. Um, my trip, I've already paid for the whole thing, so I'm just ready to go. Yeah, you're going, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome. Um, so, uh, we're kind of blowing through this pretty quickly, but like where, like, I mean, you want to compete, you want to continue to compete and obviously you still have like more skills and stuff to learn cause you're still just a blue belt. Right. But I mean, is this something that you see pursuing forever? Oh, I, for, I will do jujitsu for the rest of my life. Absolutely. I'm thinking the next five years will pretty much like be nothing but jujitsu, like this kind of crazy, um, work sleep jujitsu that's pretty much all i do all i want to do what do you do for work uh i'm a waitress at superior bar and grill okay. which is super popular in shreveport so they keep me busy yeah. um and they allow me to work whenever i need to train full time um really my weekends are basically all i need to work there i just i'm I enjoy it. I, yeah. I really do like people. So for sure, um, that's exciting. It's a fun place to work. Yeah, I had an awesome group of ladies today. Uh, they stayed for like five hours <laughs> over my 
time and everything, but I made like $300. There you go. <laughs> From one table. Yeah. Yeah. So Can't complain about that. It's a crazy place that. to work. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, that does kind of free you up to be able to make your own schedule, I guess, oh, to some yeah. degree. Um, anytime I need off, like I'm going to go to Dallas to train next week and um, with my coach's coach, which professor and um super excited about that but and they, they'll let me go like it's it's never a big deal to ask off work they're gonna let me go to, to worlds for a week and a half yeah so um, so i mean i guess is is this something that you see pursuing as your career oh man uh i don't know maybe fair enough well, fair enough <laughs> I, I mean Right now, I just want to like get good at jujitsu. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess you still have a long way to go before you can. Maybe I'm not that business minded. Maybe I should be, but yeah, not yet. I don't know. Okay, that's fair. Um, I guess where do you do you have you seen any competition that's going to be at Worlds? Like, is there other girls? I, well, I'm I stalk competitors. But, yeah. Um, that I have a tournament before that is another IBJJF. It's Dallas Spring Open. Um, I think it's May the 5th and so I have two girls in my division already and I've looked I've seen both of them and they both look like they're going to be good competition which is that's what I want those kind of matches right before Worlds. Yeah no doubt. So are there a lot of girls here within? We have about 20 women that train maybe more than that because sometimes the mats are, are packed. Um, I know at least 14 that were here just the other day so um, of all ages awesome yeah you have plenty of people to push you and oh yeah keep keep you going and, and it's not even limited like women don't have to train with women right um, the men push me yeah no doubt <laughs> they don't give me any slack at all just because i'm a woman yeah for sure um so i guess do you have a favorite like professional somebody inspires you within <laughs> the jiu-jitsu world um yeah i'm Keenan Cornelius is awesome. He invented Worm Guard. I, I'm slightly obsessed. <laughs> I freaking love him. He, um, man, he, there's this whole drama with him right now. He's like, he just left Atos, which is where he was originally, well, not originally training, but he's been training. And so I'm like, where is Keenan going to go? I'm like, oh, man. But uh, I basically my whole guard game is Worm Guard would which is what he invented. I love reverse cellar worm guard, squid guard. You yeah. know? <laughs> that's that's what I plan to play um, in Dallas and at Worlds is what I'm good at too. Yeah. And so I guess kind of break down physical competition. Uh, what, like, is you stand, you start standing up, mm -hmm. you start on the ground. Kind of describe that. For start standing, uh, standing up, you slap hands um, five minutes and then you get points for certain techniques and submissions in, in the match. Um, you, can, you can imagine like wrestling and then submission grappling though. So a joint lock, stri um, no strikes, um, strangulation. So uh, a lot of fun stuff. And is this gi and no gi? Um, gi I'm gonna be competing in the gi in Dallas and at Worlds, but tonight we're gonna be doing no gi. Yeah. So. Um, I train both, but I, I prefer gi, honestly. <laughs> Is it, there's a big difference between the two? There, there's like, okay, so with Keenan's worm guard system, you effectively double your guard game. Okay. You have twice as many guards you, that you can play as in no gi. It's, which, that blows my mind right away. Like, obviously, the gi's better. Yeah. It gotta be. Yeah. So, um, I feel like, I mean, just what I've observed, like, you have more holding points and stuff like that. Right. And oh, and then with the lapel, if you incorporate that in there as well, it's like, yeah. This is ridiculous. It's not even fair. Create all kinds of leverage there. And oh, yeah. Really mess someone's day up. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, I, so, you plan on staying here in Shreveport? Or, I mean, obviously. You're still young and have the whole world ahead of you that's what people tell me that's what i'm hoping for yeah. um, right now because of work and this training is so good um I, I have a lot of opportunities here right now so I, I plan to stay here for a little while but like there are no um no plans to move but also if you know if keenan opens his own school somewhere i might consider the move you know if the opportunity presents itself right yeah yeah that's fair i can make it <laughs> um kind of running out of questions that's okay um 
And I don't know that my camera's on anymore. So that's weird. Well, um, I don't know. I guess I guess we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Um, awesome. Kids class looks like it's about to get started. Yeah, anyway. for sure. Uh, Sarah's probably going to tab me out here in a little while. Yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, thank you for coming on. And maybe we'll catch up with you down the road. Awesome. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.